page 23 lesson 3 deep water about the author william douglas who lived between 1898 and 1980 was born in maine minnesota after graduating with a bachelor's of arts in english and economics he spent 2 years teaching high school in yakima however he got tired of this and decided to pursue a legal career he met franklin d roosevelt at yale and became an adviser and friend to the president douglas was a leading advocate of individual rights he retired in 1975 with a term lasting 36 years and remains the longest serving justice in the history of the court The following excerpt is taken from Of Men and Mountains by William O Douglas. It reveals how as a young boy William Douglas nearly drowned in a swimming pool. In this essay he talks about his fear of water and thereafter how he finally overcame it. Notice how the autobiographical part of this selection is used to support his discussion of fear. notice these words and expressions in the text infer their meaning from the context they are treacherous subdued my pride flailed at the surface fishing for landlocked salmon misadventure bob to the surface like a cork curtain of life fell and back and forth across the pool now the chapter it had happened when i was 10 or 11 years old i had decided to learn to swim there was a pool at the ymca in yakima that offered exactly the opportunity the yakima river was treacherous mother continually warned against it and kept fresh in my mind the details of each drowning in the river but the ymca pool was safe it was only 2 or 3 feet deep at the shallow end and while it was 9 feet deep at the other the drop was gradual i got a pair of water wings and went to the pool page 2 it has a sketch map of the yakima river the yakima river is a tributary of the columbia river in eastern washington usa the state is named after the indigenous yakama people now page 25 i hated to walk naked into it and show my skinny legs but i subdued my pride and did it from the beginning however I had an aversion to the water when I was in it. This started when I was 3 or 4 years old and father took me to the beach in California. He and I stood together in the surf. I hung on to him, yet the waves knocked me down and swept over me. I was buried in water. My breath was gone. I was frightened. Father laughed. but there was terror in my heart at the overpowering force of the waves my introduction to the ymc swimming pool revived unpleasant memories and stirred childish fears but in a little while i gathered confidence i paddled with my new water wings watching the other boys and trying to learn by aping them i did this two or three times on different days and was just beginning to feel at ease in the water when the misadventure happened i went to the pool when no one else was there the place was quiet the water was still and the tilted bottom was as white and clean as a bathtub i was timid about going in alone so i sat on the side of the pool to wait for others I had not been there long when in came a big bruiser of a boy probably 18 years old 
He had thick hair on his chest. He was a beautiful physical specimen with legs and arms that showed rippling muscles. He yelled, Hi, Skinny. How would you like to be ducked? With that, he picked me up and tossed me into the deep end. I landed in a sitting position, swallowed water, and went at once to the bottom. I was frightened, but not yet frightened out of my wits. On the way down, I planned, when my feet hit the bottom, I would make a big jump, come to the surface, lie flat on it, and paddle to the edge of the pool. It seemed a long way down. Those nine feet were more like ninety, and before I touched bottom, my lungs were ready to burst. But when my feet hit bottom, I summoned all my strength and made what I thought was a great spring upwards. I imagined I would bob to the surface like a cock. Instead, I came up slowly. I opened my eyes and saw nothing. Page 26 And saw nothing but water. Water that had dirty yellow tinge to it. I grew panicky. I reached up as if to grab a rope, and my hands clutched only at water. I was suffocating. I tried to yell, but no sound came out. Then my eyes and nose came out of the water, but not my mouth. I flailed at the surface of the water, swallowed and choked. I tried to bring my legs up, but they hung as dead weights, paralyzed and rigid. A great force was pulling me under. I screamed, but only the water heard me. I had started on the long journey back to the bottom of the pool. I struck at the water. I struck at the water as I went down, expending my strength as one in a nightmare fights an irresistible force. I had lost all my breath. My lungs ached. My head throbbed. I was getting dizzy. But I remembered the strategy. I would spring from the bottom of the pool and come like a cork to the surface. I would lie flat on the water, strike out with my arms and thrash with my legs. Then I would get to the edge of the pool and be safe. I went down, down, down endlessly. I opened my eyes. Nothing but water with a yellow glow dark water that one could not see through. And then sheer stark terror seized me, terror that no one can understand who has no ex terror that no one can understand who has not experienced it. I was shrieking under water. I was paralyzed under water, stiff, rigid with fear. Even the screams in my throat were frozen. Only my heart and the pounding in my head said that I was still alive. Then in the midst of the terror came a touch of reason. I must remember to jump when I hit the bottom. At last I felt the tiles under me. My toes reached out as if to grab them. I jumped with everything I had, but the jump made no difference. The water was still around me. I looked for ropes, ladders, water wings, nothing but water. A mass of yellow water held me. Stark terror took an even deeper hold on me, like a great charge of electricity. I shook and trembled with fright. My arms wouldn't move. My legs wouldn't move. I tried to call for help. I called for mother. Nothing happened. Page 27. And then, strangely, there was light. I was coming out of the awful yellow water. At least my eyes were. My nose was almost out too. Then I started down a third time. I sucked for air and got water. The yellowish light was going out. Then all effort ceased. I relaxed. Even my legs felt limp and a blackness swept over my brain. It wiped out fear. It wiped out terror. There was no more panic. It was quiet and peaceful. 
Nothing to be afraid of. This is nice. To be drowsy. To go to sleep. No need to jump. Too tired to jump. It's nice to be carried gently. To float along in space. Tender arms around me. Tender arms like mothers. Now I must go to sleep. I crossed to oblivion and the curtain of life fell. The next I remember I was lying on my stomach beside the pool vomiting. The chap, the chap that threw me in was saying, but I was only fooling. Someone said, the kid nearly died. Be all right now. Let's carry him to the locker room. Several hours later, I walked home. I was weak and trembling. I shook and cried when I lay on my bed. I couldn't eat that night. For days, a haunting fear was in my heart. The slightest exertion upset me, making me wobbly in the knees and sick to my stomach. Think as you read. Number one. What is the misadventure that William Douglas speaks about? Number two, what were the series of emotions and fears that Douglas experienced when he was thrown into the pool? What plans did he make to come to the surface? Number three, how did this experience affect him? Now continuing with the chapter. The slightest exertion, the slightest exertion upset me, making me wobbly in the knees and sick to my stomach. I never went back to the pool. I feared water. I avoided it whenever I could. A few years later, when I came to know the waters of the Cascades, I wanted to get into them. And whenever I did, whenever I was wading the Titan or bumping river or bathing in warm lake of the goats of the goat rocks the terror that had seized me in the pool would come back it would take possession of me completely my legs would become paralyzed i see horror would grab my heart this handicap stayed with me as the years rolled by in canoes on main lakes fishing for landlocked salmon Page 28. Base fishing in New Hampshire, trout fishing on the Deschutes and Mendolius in Oregon, fishing for salmon on the Columbia at Bumping Lake in the Cascades. Wherever I went, the haunting fear of the water followed me. It ruined my fishing trips, deprived me of the joy of canoeing, boating and swimming. I used every way I knew to overcome this fear, but it held me firmly in its grip. Finally, one October, I decided to get an instructor and learn to swim. I went to a pool and practiced five days a week, an hour each day. The instructor put a belt around me. A rope attached to the belt went through a pulley that ran on an overhead cable he held on to the end of the rope and we went back and forth, back and forth across the pool, hour after hour, day after day, week after week. On each trip across the pool, a bit of the panic seized me. Each time the instructor relaxed his hold on the rope and I went under, some of the old terror returned and my legs froze. It was three months before the tension began to slack. Then he taught me to put my face under water and exhale, and to raise my nose and inhale. I repeated the exercise hundreds of times. Bit by bit, I shed part of the panic that seized me when my head went under water. Next, he held me at the side of the pool and had me kick with my legs. For weeks, I did just that. At first, my legs refused to work, but they gradually relaxed, and finally I could command them. Thus, piece by piece, he built a swimmer. 
and when he had perfected each piece, he put them together into an integrated whole. In April he said, Now you can swim. Dive off and swim the length of the pool. Crawl stroke. I did. The instructor was finished. The instructor was finished. But I was not finished. I still wondered if I could be terror-stricken when I was alone in the pool. I tried it. I swam the length up and down. Tiny vestiges of the old terror would return, but now I could frown and say to that terror, Trying to scare me, eh? Well, here is to you. Look! And off I would go for another length of the pool. This went on until July, but I was still not satisfied. I was not sure that all the terror had left. So I went to Lake. So I went to Lake Wentworth. Page 29 So I went to Lake Wentworth in New Hampshire, dived off a dock at Triggs Island, and swam two miles across the lake to Stampact Island. I swam the crawl, breast stroke, side stroke, and backstroke. Only once only once did the terror return when I was in the middle of the lake. I put my face under and saw nothing but bottomless water. The old sensation returned in miniature. I laughed and said, Well, Mr. Terror, what do you think you can do to me? It fled and I swam on. Yet I had residual doubts. At my first opportunity, I hurried west, went up the Titan to Conrad Meadows, up the Conrad Creek Trail to Mead Glacier, to Mead Glacier, and camped in the high meadow by the side of Warm Lake. The next morning I stepped, dived into the lake, and swam across to the other shore and back. Just as Doug Corporon used to do, I shouted with joy and Gilbert Peak returned the echo. I had conquered my fear of water. The experience had a deep meaning for me, as only those who have known stark terror and conquered it can appreciate. In death there is peace. There is terror only in the fear of death, as Roosevelt knew when he said, All we have to fear is fear itself because I had experienced both the sensation of dying and the terror that fear of it can produce. The will to live somehow grew in intensity. At last I felt released, free to walk the trails and climb the peaks and to brush aside fear. Think as you read. Number one, why was Douglas determined to get over his fear of water. How did the instructor build a swimmer out of Douglas? How did Douglas make sure that he conquered the old